Welcome to the Oral Surgery Fight Club podcast. This is a collection of mock cases in the field of oral and maxillofacial surgery in a question and answer format conducted on Zoom. Enjoy. Okay, hold on. Let me share my screen here. Um, yeah, you're you out, out of the woods, right? I know, I know. It feels so good. <laughs> it really does feel good. Okay, uh, we're gonna follow. We're gonna follow in your footsteps, man. Yeah. Well, so here's the thing. Um, we led, like me and one of my co-residents. We we put up. Uh, we put oh, together a study sorry. group. Yeah. I was just What's gonna up? say, I'm looking at the board certification, and it says. Yeah. It's for the QE, so not for. The oh, work. okay. Okay. Yeah. That that's. I don't. I wonder that's that sucks. Better. I wonder how it's gonna change. Yeah, it looks the same. I have the 2022 one up right now. Yeah. Like yours and it's exactly the same. The uh, webinar is said it's, it's for the 2022 qualifying examination. So. Uh, oh. But anyway, we're, I guess okay. we're out of the woods. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we led a, we led a study group and we had like probably six to eight of us meeting like two times a week, like uh, every Wednesday and every Saturday for like an hour. And somebody would just sign up to bring a case and somebody would sign up to be an examinee. Right. Um, and we went through this, this blueprint according to like, I think I pulled it up. Right. Um, so it's like section one, two, three, and it, it goes pretty quick, honestly. Um, it's like a wait, 144 minutes. What is that? Three hours, like three and, and a half. half, two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. It's two and a half. Um, okay. and they, and they sort of blend one to the next. It's like, I mean, they might stick around on one of these topics like orthognathics or infection, but all in all, there's only so much they can get through. Um, yeah. I, I thought it was, I thought it was actually like a pretty, it wasn't as bad as grand rounds. It seemed like a pretty fair thing. Um, there really wasn't a whole lot of like super complicated stuff, but, um, okay. And I, the most important thing was practicing. And it, it was the same as Nashville, basically. Anyway. Yeah, Nashville's good, but it was also like, I guess one thing to know, I mean, it's two weeks before our exam was a little different. So hopefully you know your stuff. But I heard a lot of Nashville is a little bit more in depth than the actual exam, actually. Yeah. I, I, well, so like, so, don't freak out if they're not, like, I'm going to go. I know. Yeah. I'm going. Yeah. Um, no, it's such a popular course. Yeah, it's a it's a great course. I, I I really recommend it. But a lot of the cases, I think they sort of uh, they're meant to scare you into studying a little bit because um, yeah. some of these cases, like one of them they pulled up was a um, this is like <laughs> stage four melanoma. And it was that way from the get go. And you're basically getting a 12 minute case on melanoma. Um, but anyway, um, Serge, you want this first case? You'd sort of why it, right. it's some it's something more simple. Let's do it, man. Let me Let's see. <clears throat> okay. Oh, wait. And did you guys make up the cases or um yeah, these are just like just have them? well, so these are just cases from like residency and it's a good exercise to go through to like be the examiner and the examinee. So like maybe I know it's a little early, like when's the exam? February, late February, yeah. early beginning of February or end of January. Yeah. Of yeah. So maybe like, I still got a bunch of cases that I uh, kind of used for this study group. So I'm kind of used to walking through it, but as we go through it, maybe um, one of you guys or whoever feels like it can like pull up a case from residency and like act as the examiner. And I'll go through the case again, like as the examinee, um, even if I'm like doing poorly, but it helps to be in both seats because that during the exam, it helps to know what road they might take you down. Like if you're, you know, sitting in a dental alveolar case, you've, and you've practiced it, you kind of know the line of questioning they'll take you down. Um, right. and, and it's all in the practice. Like it, it's so funny that this exam is like the one exam in our life that like they, I don't know, it just requires practice. And that's basically it. It's not like memorizing slides or something. 
But well, uh, I see, well, I see five tumors. There's five wisdom teeth, so I think those are all. Those are all. Those are all, tumors, <laughs> all right, right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, so hold on, hold on. Let's see. All right, all right. So Serge, you get a uh, 51 year old guy uh, comes to your office. Here, we'll we'll start the clock. I don't. I, what time is yeah. it? Is this oh, like 12 Ryan? 12 on the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan, on the actual exam, is it like written out for you like this? Because you know, how, like sometimes, like you're like, wait, what did you just say? Yeah. Well. It's it's not always. It's not always. And and these first few cases will be kind of bumpy probably for everybody because like because you're just getting used um, to it. Yeah, we're getting used to it. And there's a good formula. Like as we go, you'll see it's 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 not that bad. It's not that bad. Um, but they kind of push you along. They're trying to work with you and earn you the points. But um okay, let's go okay. let's go through this thing. All right. Um Serge, can you see the screen? Yeah, I can. Mm -hmm. All right, so you get a 51-year-old um, lady who comes to you with swelling of the left TMJ. What would you like to know? All right, so uh, we're going to get a history of duration, onset, uh, past medical history, medications, allergies, social habits. Yeah, so she says uh, it's been increasing in size. She's a pretty healthy lady. Uh, it's not really painful, but it's been present for the past year. Um, no med history, no allergies, no previous surgeries. Okay, good. We're going to do a uh, thorough head and neck exam, including yeah, uh, inspection, uh, palpation of the TMJ area, mouth opening, and intraoral exam. Right. Uh, tell me about your, your physical exam. Walk me through it. Uh, so we're going to uh, inspect the, um, uh, the patient extraorally in, in front of you, uh, see if there's any symmetry. Um, uh, then we're going to palpate the joint areas bilaterally. We're going to examine her mouth opening. Um, and we're going to check for any kind of mucosal lesions in her Right. So she has kind of like a hard egg crackling swelling of the left face near the TMJ. Uh, it is a little asymmetric over the left TMJ, but it's not painful, not fluctuant. Intraorally, you kind of notice that... Um, there's a discharge from the operculum overlying number 17. Uh, what do you want to do next? All right. Well, we're going to do a, um, uh, just a panoramic x-ray to begin with. Yeah. So your assistant gets this panel. Can you describe to me what you see? Yeah. It looks like a, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Can like I just a... interrupt for a second? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, can you just say you want to go to get a CT? Like nowadays, we all have yeah. CBCTs. Oh, okay. You, you definitely could. You definitely could. Yeah. Um, sometimes they'll push you down a road, though. And, sir, yeah. just a uh, forewarning. If I interrupt you, it's not because, like, um, yeah. for any particular reason. It's just they, they do that sometimes. Okay. Oh, like they interrupt you in the doing exam? Yeah. If, like, you're going through your physical exam and they know you know what you're talking about, they'll just say like they'll say something just move forward yeah they'll say something like i understand and then they'll you know cut you <laughs> off and move to the next thing <laughs> okay all right sounds good okay so here we have a, uh, a panoramic exam diagnostic exam uh, that shows a large uh, well-defined radiolucency in the left uh, uh, mandibular ramus subcondylar area that includes uh, a tooth a Mm -hmm. like within within it and um uh pretty much no other mandibular maxillary bony lesions teeth with a few restorations uh, no abnormal soft tissue calcification seen sure what would you um what's on your differential at this time oh we have uh millibostoma uh okc um the cyst Nixoma, hemangioma. Okay. Um, you also obtained a medical grade CT, and here are some cuts of it. Right. Also, just as an aside, when they give you cuts on the actual exam, they're like all over the place. They're they're not organized about it. You can ask them to scroll through it if you want to and stuff like that. Or yeah, but they it. only show you a couple. So, um, what's your uh, surgical plan at this time? I'd like to do an incisional biopsy of this lesion. Um, okay. You do an incisional biopsy. Um, yeah. So what would your, uh, 
But what would you tell the patient before the patient says, doc, what's going on? Well, I would tell them most likely it's a benign lesion. Um, we don't know exactly what it is until biopsy results are submitted. Uh, but sure. it will require most likely a surgery down the line. To sure. The, the patient thing. says, doc, what kind of surgery are we talking about? Uh, it's going to be a, uh, either enucleation of a cyst or, uh, or a resection of that whole part of the mandible with it, that has the cyst in it. Sure. Um, so you get to the OR, the patient's been consented, prep draped, everything. Uh, can you describe your surgical approach? We're going to do a um, um, vestibular incision uh, in, in, a, in kind of mandibular area uh, to um, then uh, basically make the subperiosteal dissection on the lateral aspect of the ramus, expose the sigmoid notch, uh, expose the posterior uh, segment of the mandible of the ramus. Mm -hmm. um, um, once you cut into the cyst, you get... Um like a, a brown kind of fluid out of the, out of the cyst. What does that suggest to you? Uh, well, uh, it's, it's not bright red, so it's not hemangioma. That's good. Uh, <laughs> that, that means it's most likely the indigenous cyst. Uh, what if it was a, like a white carination <clears throat> fluid? Oh, then it's okay. See most likely. Okay. Uh, <sighs> so you get a bunch of fragments out. Um, what is the, can you describe the usual pathology of a of an OKC, like the lining of it? Histology, yeah, sorry. It's, uh, sure, it's it's the one like the palisading uh, epithelium along the basement membrane. Sure. Um, how would you how would you follow up with this patient? So, uh, so after we got exact diagnosis, um, let's see. OKC, then I'd recommend a um, basically a resection of that area, uh, removing of the whole um, the whole sternal region. Um, I'm, along along you, the you said a, you said a re resection. Yeah. Um, well, so you get a you, you enucleate it, and uh, the patient okay. follows up. Okay, I got you. A few months later. Um, oh, okay. It, it's it starting to look like this. We just, we just enucleated it. Okay. I got you. All right. Well, in that case, we're going to put her on a soft diet, um, for at least six weeks and mm -hmm. continue following with her, uh, warning her of risk of a pathological fracture. Sure. Uh, would you put, what would you put her on as far as post-op meds? Uh, well, on, uh, antibiotics, um, if she's not allergic to amoxicillin and some uh, NSAIDs. Sure. Um, well, that, I, I thought you did, you know, pretty well there. That, that's the end of the case. It was a pretty uncomplicated one. Um, yeah, that was quick, man. Oh, oh, oh actually, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. Let, let's go through like a, like a complication of one. Like, let's say at, at three weeks, yeah. she has hypoesthesia on the left side. And she, right. like so, the, sw the swelling really hasn't gone down. Three weeks now, she had no hypoesthesia to begin with? No good. hypoesthesia to begin with. Wait, are you saying that she has hypoesthesia three weeks after or? Yeah, three weeks yeah. after. Like, like it's like, a new hypoesthesia? It's mm -hmm. a new hypoesthesia okay, and the okay. swelling really hasn't gone down. Pain's getting worse. Um, Okay. Well, that, that's suggesting to me probably an infection going on in the area. Sure. Uh, so I want to get a CT scan uh, with contrast, actually. Would you get any vitals any... in your office? Uh, yeah, we're going to check her temperature. So she's got a temperature. Um, she doesn't look good. Area over it is red and hot. Yeah. So we'll have to ask her to uh, head over to ER, get a CT scan with uh, contrast, establish IV, and get, get like a couple of dose of the antibiotics and uh, yeah, observe her at that point. Sure. Uh, so you do that and everything um, ends up being like a, a, you know, some, some soft tissue cellulitis over the area. Um, what would you okay. do if, if things were closed primarily or like, just about closed primarily intraorally, but you weren't getting any drainage. 
you see a you see a slight collection maybe lateral to the to the ramus well there's a collection lateral the ramus well definitely then i would just open up the incision again and uh wash it all out thoroughly and interrupt me you know, obviously not operating on and uh put a put a drain in cool cool that, that's all yeah. i got for you that was okay. pretty good that was, that was oh, pretty damn. good at least for like a, a, a first case there well, you then, you, you, you said, Ryan, Ryan, you saved the lady from getting her uh, jaw chopped off. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, you, you steer me, you steer me back. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I thought you're, you know, everything so was you, pretty good there. I mean, you, you went through um, uh -huh. getting her chief complaint, like getting the nature mm -hmm. of it, like uh, mm -hmm. of the pain, what the swelling was like, what the course was like. And then you went in pretty quickly. I mean, you can eliminate a lot of stuff right off the bat. And the objective of the exam, I, I feel like is just to move fast and get the information pretty quick. Okay. okay. Um, just to rack up points quick. And you, you did all that, like uh, going through the med history, allergies, okay. all that. Um, good, good, good. Physical exam. It's funny. Um, you get three different sets of examiners, right? On each section, uh -huh. there's just, there's one set for that whole section. Um. So if you do things right the first time, like for the very first case with your set of examiners, mm -hmm. they will actually not ask you that question for the rest of the cases that they give you. At okay. least that's what so I know. What do you like, mean? What do you mean? Well, so um, let me see if I could go back through my notes. Um, Can you walk us through like what it's like uh, day of exam, like. And, and, and by the way, just if I can ask one more question about this case. So when, yeah. when I um, kind of requested medical history, allergies and stuff like that, you didn't really specify or respond to that. Does that mean it's okay? Just move on. Me means that it's yeah, yeah. if they don't mention it. I mean, you can, there are a couple things that I mentioned more than once because yeah, they didn't answer it, but that's just the examiner. Um, okay. You, that means you, just assume it's you, not important or something like that. Yeah, Exactly. Exactly. I, th I think I said like Perfect. it was all clear. Like she had, she had nothing, nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. truth be told, uh, they don't, I don't think histology is that important to them. Like they're never going to pull up a histology slide and ask you, what do you see? Okay. okay. That I, that's never going to happen. Um, the day of the exam is, uh, interesting. They take you on a bus to like a, a center um kind of in north hills raleigh like here and okay. um you get off the bus everyone is in a suit and tie you pack into an elevator you go up to like a conference kind of room and they have a whole bunch of it's just a it's like a testing center i guess they they use with uh like obgyn or something kids um, kids oral boards were there too like a couple weeks ago are they are they yeah that's, yeah, that's I had some people, friends that took it, and I was like, that's oh. the same place, I think. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, is it going to be uh, this next year? Is, I mean, this this, this time is going to be the same place, do you think? Yeah, it's got to be the same place. There's only, like, one center. Um, oh, okay. So Nitrostat is actually 0.4. I'm wrong. Um, I think I said 0.4 on, on the exam, but I don't know. It doesn't matter now. Um, yeah, so you, you get there. They give a little presentation, and I don't know. They say, you know take some time to relax. You got like, you know, 15 minutes to do whatever you want. And so you're just sort of sitting in a room with a bunch of people and, okay. um, and then they take you back for the exam. Um, and it goes, it goes pretty quick. You, you stay in that same little room, uh, for the majority of the time, there's one, one little like computer monitor and two guys sit across from you and they sort of cycle in and out according to whatever section it is. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I gotta sharpen my swords for the oral boards. I learned them from Mattel and he's the Lord. And I'm his protege, you know I'm gonna slay. All these motherfucking questions today. Cause I got the sound bite. They're gonna make these old men go, ooh, ah, like some afternoon delight. Yo, I got these questions in my sight and I got the answers. Yo, my answers is so ill. Thanks for tuning in to Oral Surgery Fight Club. For uncut episodes and sound bites, go to osfightclub.com.